Hey, there's one problem I know that almost everybody seems to have, and that's a problem with sleep. Uh, people are watching their electronic devices and scrolling, and they just can't seem to, it's, it, and I understand it. It's a little bit hard sometimes to stop. So today I want to share with you some insight from a book called Why We Sleep, Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams. It's not really about figuring out what your dreams mean. This is about the science of sleep. And there's so many, I, I'd like to read the whole book to you, but that wouldn't be fair to the author. I'm going to recommend that you per, uh, consider purchasing this book. I'm going to just give you some samples out of the book. It's not really a book reaction. It's not really a book review. It's just some insights. Now, now I, I'm going to assume because I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not a big, I don't have the sleep science background. So I'm just going to start by assuming that the amazing things that this book tells us about sleep, that maybe it's 50% overestimated. So like that all these things that we're talking about here are exaggerated 50%. If only half of this stuff is useful, then it's critical and can be an enormous help to your benefit to your and my health. So let me start and just throw a few quick pieces to you. Uh, so this is why we sleep. Uh, and here's from chapter one. Routinely sleeping less than six hours a night weakens your immune system, substantially increasing your risk of certain forms of cancer. So if you routinely sleep less than six hours a night, and that's a lot of people of you watching this video, uh, if you sleep less than six, they're saying that that dramatically increases your chances of cancer. Well, anything that would dramatically increase your chances of cancer, something you don't want to do, something I don't want to do. So uh, I... I am laboring to have the, a more proper amount of sleep, and you should also as well. Here's another little note I've highlighted from uh, right at the first pages. Too little sleep swells concentrations of a hormone that makes you feel hungry while suppressing a companion hormone that otherwise signals food satisfaction. So in other words, a person who struggles with weight, having being too heavy for their proper weight, uh, that could easily be a person who's struggling with sleep. Uh, none of us want to be pretty much uh, overweight. And so again, uh, sleep is going to directly affect almost virtually everything it seems like here. So uh, just a couple of health items. We'll get to a few more later on. Sleep is the single most effective thing we can do to reset our brain and body health each day. Mother Nature's best effort yet at contra death, says the author. So I'm a Christian. I don't believe that there is, you know, Mother Nature. God set up Mother Nature. God set up nature the way it works. Uh, and so when I look at this, I wouldn't have worded it that way. But I like the idea of contra death. Uh, sleep is one of the most, if it's not the number one, I don't know what is, but this is a key thing you can do to be a good steward of your health as a believer in Jesus or as an unbeliever, either way, um, to help your health is to be getting the proper amount of sleep. And so it's the single most effective thing, and I think that is probably true. So anyway, uh, yeah, you might have to change uh, some business the way you do things. So uh, there's a whole bunch here of stuff on your, your body clock and how that works. I'm not going to go into that, uh, even though that's important. Uh, melatonin and so on. But let me go on through and uh, talk a little bit about... I want to read uh, a lot of this section uh, called Sleep, Pressure, and Caffeine because so many people are using caffeine. There's people out there telling you all the wonderful health benefits of caffeine. Well, let me tell you some of the non-health benefits. And if you don't like this, you might just turn it off right now and go get a cup of coffee. But my suggestion to you is you don't get a cup of coffee at all. Check this out. Your 24-hour circadian rhythm is the first of the two factors determining wake and sleep. The second is sleep pressure. At this very moment, a chemical called adenosine is building up in your brain. It will continue to increase in concentration with every waking minute that elapses. The longer that you're awake, the more adenosine will accumulate. Think of adenosine as a chemical barometer that continuously registers the amount of elapsed time since you woke up this morning. One consequence of increasing adenosine in the brain is an increasing desire to sleep. This is known as sleep pressure, and it is the second force that will determine when you feel sleepy, and thus which should go to bed. Using a clever dual action effect, high concentrations of adenosine simultaneously turn down the volume of wake promoting regions of the brain and turn up the dial on sleep-inducing regions. As a result of that chemical sleep pressure, when adenosine concentrations peak, an irresistible urge for slumber will take hold. It happens to most people after 12 to 16 hours of being awake. You can, however, artificially mute the sleep signal of adenosine by using a chemical that makes you feel more alert and awake, caffeine. 
Caffeine is not a food supplement. Rather, caffeine is the most widely used and abused psychoactive stimulant in the world. It is the second most traded commodity on the planet after oil. The consumption of caffeine represents one of the longest and largest unsupervised drug studies ever conducted on the human race, perhaps rivaled only by alcohol, and it continues to this day. I'm going to keep reading here about caffeine, a couple more paragraphs here. This, this, if you're doing any caffeine, listen to this. Just listen to this. Caffeine works by successfully battling with adenosine for the privilege of latching onto adenosine welcome sites or receptors in the brain. Once caffeine occupies these receptors, however, it does not stimulate them like adenosine, making you sleepy. Rather, caffeine blocks and effectively inactivates the receptors, acting as a masking agent. It is the equivalent of sticking your fingers in your ears to shut out a sound. By hijacking and occupying these receptors, caffeine blocks the sleepiness signal normally communicated to the brain by adenosine. The upshot, caffeine tricks you into feeling alert and awake despite the high levels of adenosine that would otherwise seduce you into sleep. Levels of circulating caffeine peak approximately 30 minutes after oral administration. What is problematic, though, is the persistence of caffeine in your system. In pharmacology, we use the term half-life when discussing a drug's efficacy. This simply refers to the length of time it takes for the body to remove 50% of a drug's concentration. Now, we'll listen. Caffeine has an average half-life of five to seven hours. Let's say you have a cup of coffee after your evening dinner around 7.30. This means that by 1.30 a.m., 50% of the caffeine may still be active and circulating through your brain tissue. In other words, by 1.30 a.m., you're only halfway to completing the job of cleansing your brain of the caffeine you drank after dinner. I'll stop there for a minute. So, huh, yeah, if you have trouble sleeping and you're, you're doing caffeine, huh, you, of course you're having trouble sleeping. You, the, the caffeine gets into the receptors in your brain that's supposed to take the sleep chemical. The reason the sleep chemical, the reason the sleep chemical comes is because God designed us to, in our, in our damaged fallen state, 12 to 16 hours is about the, the right amount of time and we need to take a break and we need to sleep. The body needs that help and in, in healing for so many other ways that are mentioned further on in the book. I've got electronic version of the book. So yes, you know, um, why would we go against nature? We're going against the, the, the design of our own body when we take and then we plug in the caffeine into those receptors and the receptors are looking for adenosine, but caffeine sort of tr tricks it. And now it's got this, this hyper vigilance, this hyper alertness. And yeah, even even if you start a drink it at 7:30, by 1:30, maybe oh, maybe half of it is still in your system. You know, no wonder you're kind of wired. Now let me keep on reading a little bit more. There's nothing benign about that 50% mark either. Half a shot of caffeine is still plenty powerful, and much more decomposition work lies ahead throughout the night before caffeine disappears. Sleep will not come easily or be smooth throughout the night as your brain continues its battle against the opposing force of caffeine. Most people do not realize how long it takes to overcome a single dose of caffeine and therefore fail to make the link between the bad night of sleep we wake from in the morning and the cup of coffee we had 10 hours earlier with dinner. Caffeine, which is not only prevalent in coffee, certain teas and many energy drinks and goes on and tells you other things that it's in, uh, is a culprit that keeps people from falling asleep easily and sleeping soundly thereafter, typically masquerading as insomnia, an actual medical condition. Also be aware that decaffeinated does not mean non-caffeinated. Depending on the decaffeination method and the bean that is used, one cup of decaf can have between three and as high as 10% of the dose of a regular cup of coffee. And there's more here about caffeine. Uh, here, I'll just skip to this line. The older we are, the longer it takes our brain and body to remove caffeine. So if you're struggling with staying awake and you're doing anything with caffeine in it, you are doing yourself harm. You are, you are doing, you know, you're do, doing kind of suicide on the installment plan. It's like, it's kind of like smoking. You know, you, you intentionally are taking the cigarette and you're intentionally subjecting your body to this extremely damaging thing. And you say, well, no, I, I would never do a thing like that to my body. But if you're drinking caffeine or ingesting caffeine in some way, shape or form in the, in the last half of your day, uh, yeah, you are, you are making it very hard on your body. You're going premature aging. Uh, you don't want that. That's, that's not what you want. Anyway, there's more here. Of course, you've seen the spider webs, you know, that the caffeinated spider makes. I'm not going to bother with that here. Um, 
So let's go on here and let me add uh, a few other. Uh, your, your brain, it takes the things you've learned during the day and it turns them into memories during the night. It moves it from one, one part of the brain to another part of the brain. But if you are sleeping poorly, that's probably not going to happen very well. Um, there's, there's different kinds of sleep. I'm gonna skip that. You know, it wouldn't be fair to the author for me to just give you the whole contents of the book. This is a, a remarkable book. I've read it through two or three times and I've tried to incorporate a lot of these things into my own uh, practice. And I have improved the amount of sleep I'm getting. And I'm very glad for this. You know, uh, we believe, a Christian believes that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That being the case, then we should treat the body with care. And sleep, if it is indeed the number one thing you can do for your health, uh, we saw at the beginning, you know, it, it suppresses the immune system and, and so on. Uh, when you don't get enough sleep. So yeah, this is uh, this is something. Now there's a very interesting section in here, chapter about animals that sleep with half of their brain at a time. Some of the uh, aquatic animals, they turn off half their brain and sleep. It's sleeping while the other half is alert. Some of the birds do something like this. It's pretty, it's just pretty wild, incredible how that works, but I'm not going to, going to uh, this is a book worthy of, uh, of your attention. Let me just try to, I'm going to skip all the part about the different kinds of sleep, the stages of sleep. Let me mention a, a section here on autism. This is about page 80 on the digital copy. Biologically, it is as if the day and night are far less light and dark, respectively, for artistic inter individuals. As a consequence, there is a weaker signal for when stable, awake, and solid sleep should take place. Additionally, and perhaps related, the total amount of sleep that autistic children can generate is less than that of the non-autistic children. And so if you're, if you're sleep depriving yourself, you're, you're, you're turning on, uh, you're putting yourself in a similar category uh, to people who uh, have the misfortune of, of being autistic, uh, which is something we wouldn't, we wouldn't want. So let's see here, what else do we wanna add here? Uh, there's a, now during the night, your brain, uh, needs these different kinds of sleep and some of the different things that happen in your brain. I'm not going to elaborate here, but there's something called beta amyloid, which is a plaque that builds up in people who get Alzheimer's disease. And people who get less sleep are also vastly more prone to get Alzheimer's disease, sometimes starting in your 60s. I have reached the end of my, I'm now in my 60s. So um, yeah, I'm thinking about this with care. I wonder how much I, I want to work against this. So we want to get the right amount of sleep and uh, I want to avoid beta amyloid plaques because I don't want, I don't want uh, Alzheimer's. Do you? Does anybody want Alzheimer's? Um, so anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to do two or three videos, maybe four videos on this book, but that covers the first six chapters. I just want to encourage you to take steps to get the right amount of sleep. And we'll talk further in some of the other sections I look at here about blue light, and we'll talk about uh, some, some different things you can do. So this is just kind of a setup. This is a primer for you, just a beginning. And uh, I know this won't this kind of content won't appeal to you know every person who watches the channel. But man, if you want good health, you want good sleep. If you want to be able to wake up bright and and happy, uh, you want good sleep. So anyway, maybe half of this stuff is. Uh, is, is it could be wrong, but this is Why We Sleep, Matthew Walker, PhD, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams. And um, it is a bestseller and um, hard to put down. Really important science about how we sleep and things that we've learned now that, you know, if we can know them, why wouldn't we? If we can sleep better, why wouldn't we? We take steps, you know, about the things that we eat. Uh, we take steps with, uh, getting physical exercise. We're very careful with the foods we eat. Some of us choose to not eat meat products. Some people choose not to do dairy products and so on because we're, we're trying to find the most, the optimum diet. And yet we do those things, but we are not, uh, we're not taking care of our sleep. That's, that's greasy, that's wrong. That's not what we want it to be. So I want to encourage you, if you believe your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, uh, friend, I want to encourage you to seek to get more sleep. Get the right amount of sleep at the right time. So I'll come back and do another, uh, come through the next section here and do one or two more of these on this book. This I'm just kind of grabbing stuff on the edges, 
Uh, I did go into some detail with caffeine because caffeine is, is also very widely used. If you're using caffeine, I just want to suggest to you today, you, you don't want to do that. Drink some good, clean, pure water. Do the things that will help you with your health. You know, somebody called it Adam's Elixir, you know, clean, pure water. That will do better for you than uh, all that caffeine and all the soda pop and all the sugar, just drinking down the sugar. Uh, avoid those things. Get some good sleep. And we'll talk about that some more as I do a second part to this. Hey, friends, God be with you. I know some of you are convicted. You need to do something about your sleep and you haven't done it. I'm encouraging you to start today. God be with you and go and get some good sleep starting starting tonight. Or if not, then, then definitely start tomorrow. Time is wasting. God be with you. Hey, I've put a link in the description. Uh, I've set up this Amazon affiliate thing. So if you wanted to purchase this book, uh, I would get some tiny, tiny percentage there. Would be a little help supporting this channel and supporting the uh, the equipment I have had to buy and so on. So anyway, if you want to do it, do that. Don't uh, don't trigger the link though from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. We want to keep the Sabbath holy and blessed and be blessed by that. So anyway, the link's there if you're interested. Uh, this is just a book I read. This is not something, they didn't pay me to write this. They didn't pay me to do the video. They, I've never been in touch with them except that I clicked on it and bought it on Amazon. So this isn't sponsored by the author or anything. I've never even met the author. All I've done is just read that book. And so, uh, so there's no connection like that. But it uh, just has been something that has helped me, and I pass it on as a help to you.